discussion compounding of plastics ma so what is compounding of plastics means it is the process of adding ingredients to the resin ingredients to the resin okay to increase the okay physical properties of the molded products physical properties means for example uh, you, we can tell that increasing the hardness of the plastic resin to increase the uh, hardness we are adding fillers okay we dis discussed already yesterday we are using fillers uh, for example silica carbide and quartz we are using to provide extra hardness to so to increase the physical properties of the plastics we are going to add ingredients ingredients to the resin to the resin we are adding okay now so what are that ingredients are okay to the polymer resin to the resin we are going to add all other ingredients are plasticizers fillers stabilizers lubricants accelerators or catalyst coloring materials okay coloring materials so yesterday we discussed already about uh, uh, plasticizers fillers okay okay now first one resin there are two types of resin what are the two types of resin thermoplastic thermosetting thermoplastic resins sir thermosetting resins sir so thermoplastic resins are they are fusible and remoldable thermoplastic resins are fusible and remoldable and remoldable we can go for reshaping okay so we can remold the thermoplastic resins whereas thermosetting resins are they are uh, we cannot go for remolding okay they are non fusible forms of the resins uh, they are having a strong covalent bond cross linked structure okay but we use uh, catalyst ma, for thermoplastic thermosetting resins okay resin means uh, it is the uh, we are taking two types of resins ma. one is thermoplastic resins other is thermosetting resins so here i gave one example here polyethylene resin that is thermoplastic resin polyvinyl chloride that is also thermoplastic resin so to this resin okay you are taking one cup and you are making a mixture here you are okay preparing a chemical mixture means you are adding some ingredients chemicals to the resin okay so now we are adding plasticizers to the resin polymer resin we are taking plasticizers so to increase the plasticity and flexibility we are adding the chemicals like uh, for example tricrystal phosphate tributyl phosphate triphenyl phosphate so these chemicals we are adding so when we are adding these chemicals to the polymer resins uh, so it will uh, neutralize the it will get inside the polymer chains so you can see in the diagram this diagram also you have to draw the students in exam this no need structure and all but this diagram you have to draw so the plasticizer molecules get inside the polymer chain and it neutralize the intermolecular forces of attraction okay neutralize the intermolecular force of attraction between the polymer chains between the polymer chains so so that uh, uh, there will be flexibility to the polymer chain will be taking place ma. we can go for reshaping we can mold into any desired shape okay na? so the breaking of intermolecular forces between polymer chains uh, facilitate the easy movement of polymer chains so thereby uh, there will be increasing the flexibility of the plastic and we can go for any shape so this increasing the flexibility of the plastic by adding plasticizers uh, okay so we can go into any shape but here one small disadvantage like reducing the strength but not more completely a little bit it will be reducing the strength okay and also chemical resistance to the plastic ah tell me ma'am part b prepare avalsi na avasaram leda ma'am amma part b ne prepare avali ante 3 marks 2 marks ane undi ga ma'am long answer 3 marks 2 marks kuda adutara ma'am see the students you are see don't think that how how the answer is how much it is lengthy don't forget about the marks whatever the question you are getting you have to write because uh, for semester and exam the same question you will get for seven marks listening to me ma'am you put a same question three marks two marks kitchena ante ante appadane raayala ma'am raayali enta meek enta time istharu 90 minutes istharu em chestharu raayandi Okay. For, for semester and exam it will be easy for you 
Yes, ma'am. You prepare as it is. You prepare my notes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Hand it a notes I have sent to you. Okay. Black and white. Uh, you got uh, not colored black and white only, no? Ah, uh, prepare that notes only. Okay, na? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, same as it is. How much? I don't know how many I have sent you. I have sent you second unit uh, handwritten notes, uh, part C question answers I have sent you, and third unit also I have sent you. you. See everything. Follow that notes only. Hello, students. Sir. Yes, ma'am. Follow the PPTs yes, also. PPTs also you can follow. No problem. No problem. Enough uh, matter is there. Okay, na. You can read from PPTs also. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, follow the PPT. My notes. Okay. And you can write well, but uh, write as it is. How I, I how I have given the notes. Okay, don't write short answers. Sir. Okay, understood, ma'am. Ma? Uh. If we learn long answers, we can also write short answers from that also, no, ma'am. No, you can write. If you get the questions, sir, you can write. Should no we prepare problem. all three parts, ma'am? Part A, Part B, Part C. If you learn long questions, then you can easily write short answers, na. Worksheet, no? what worksheet, ma? Worksheet, ante. See the students. I have sent you notes. That is handwritten notes. Like according to the topic, it will be. But to see the questions from question bank and prepare my handwritten notes. Ma'am, I have sent question and answers. 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 Question Like in the handwritten notes which you sent, ma'am, uh, there are some pages which are not required, na, ma'am. In the first required. module. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Some not required is there. You mark it. Okay, ma'am. Okay, na. That uh, whatever not required topic is there. Uh, don't think about that. Leave that one. Okay, na. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Huh? Okay, ma'am. Ah, uh, if you get any doubt, you can call me. Huh? Let me complete this topic. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Ma, okay, ma after completing the this topic, we will discuss. Okay, na? Huh? Okay. Okay. Ma. So to increase the plasticity and flexibility, we are going to use the plasticizers. My example, no, triphenyl phosphate, triphenyl phosphate, and tributyl phosphate. We are using. And next, we are taking plasticizers. And next, fillers, ma. Fillers, we are adding uh, here to the. Uh, polymer resins we are taking uh, uh, to get a, a better hardness to the plastic and to increase the strength opacity and good finishing product will get more workability to the plastics so it will uh, reduce the brittleness of the polymer okay when we are using fillers it will reduce the brittleness of the polymer also okay some of the examples i am giving you carborundum silica carbide and quartz two examples ma here okay so that are added to the plastic resin to provide extra hardness extra hardness to get the hardness of the plastic we will add silica carbide and quartz so quartz means that is also silica oxide okay next barium salts we are adding to the polymer resin to make the plastic impervious to x rays it does not allow the x rays ma we are adding barium salts to the polymer resins next addition of asbestos provides a heat and corrosion resistance heat and it will be resistant to heat and corrosion okay next here we can take uh, fillers so the other examples we can use wood flour gypsum uh, sawdust marble flour cotton fibers okay at least three or two you remember this one but these three compulsory how to write fillers so from this common used fillers you write at least to two okay na so this is about fillers ma to improve the hardness of the plastic and to increase the uh, to increase the strength and to get a good finishing product we will add uh, fillers to the polymer resins so next is lubricants students lubricants makes the molding of plastic easier molding of plastic easier okay so they they impart glossy finishing to the products Okay, so it prevents uh, lubricants prevents uh, molded molded article from sticking to the fabrication equipment. See ma, for example, you are taking a polyethylene uh, that soft material. You will take 
okay uh, means we will prepare a mixture of resin mixture of ingredients with resin we have prepared one material soft material and we'll take a molded fabrication equipment like a bottle shape okay bottle shape is there so we'll pour that mixture into the that molded parts that fabrication equipment we are pouring okay so when we are pouring and we are applying heat and pressure so that plastic material should not stick to the fabrication equipment should not stick to the fabrication equipment so that so in the mixture only when we are preparing this resin and other ingredients we will take one ingredient as a uh, we will we are taking lubricants oils also we are adding in that mixture why means so this lubricants prevents the molded article from sticking to the fabrication equipment so it won't stick to the to that fabrication equipment what we are taking the plastic material so after pouring that plastic material into that fabrication equipment bottle shape apply the heat and pressure then after uh, you can uh, cool it that uh, okay you can cool the product you can uh, you can take out bottle okay na? so you will you can uh, uh, we are not getting any problem here when we are going for molding process examples we can take waxes oils steroids and soaps examples so lubricants also it is needed for us we have to add in plastic resin so next one we will add catalyst catalyst in more polymer resin we are adding so catalyst are mainly added to thermosetting plastics most of the time we will take uh, catalyst in thermoplastic thermosetting plastics uh, why means in order to accelerate the polymerization okay a fusible resin to cross link form because some polymers ma uh, that uh, thermosetting resins uh, some polymers so they will have the um, uh, fusible resin means they will have the uh, straight chain structure they will have okay so to convert that uh, straight chain structure to cross linked form we will use catalyst we will use catalyst to increase the polymerization process so that it slowly convert from uh, fusible resin and uh, straight chain resin to cross linked forms ma, during molding operation during molding operation so we will use catalyst for thermosetting plastics okay so catalyst what we are using in this process is hydrogen peroxide we can use benzoyl peroxide and we can use metals like uh, silver copper and lead and metallic oxide zinc oxide i gave example zinc oxide so students you remember catalyst three examples you remember hydrogen peroxide benzoyl peroxide and zinc oxide so we will use the catalyst to, to convert a, a fusible resin to cross linked forms during molding operation so um, most of the time we will use for thermosetting plastics so next is stabilizers stabilizers are added to the molding components to improve thermal stability of plastics so what that plastic material it should be stable to the heat it should be it should be resistant to heat okay so it should not undergo degradation okay na so we, we will add stabilizers to the polymer resin so st stabilizers are added to the mold molding components to improve thermal stability of plastics during processing during processing without undergoing degradation of that material we will add in that polymer resin mixture we will use the stabilizers also okay so there are two kinds of stabilizers we use opaque molding stabilizers okay without a transparent light and transparent molding stabilizers okay we will use examples opaque molding stabilizers are like uh, uh, we will take lead salts like lead chromate okay you can see here lead chromate and we will use white lead and lead silicate etc transparent molding stabilizers we use uh, a lead stearate everybody is getting confusion here if i gave like this better to give it like this so transparent molding stabilizers we will use lead stearate barium stearate and cadmium stearate so these are also we will use ma, as a stabilizers in a polymer resin mixture we will add this okay na? in compounding of plastics so next last one is colorants 
okay mm -hmm. uh, we will use color smart to get a desired color to plastics means mm -hmm. when we go to shop we will see the color and uh, uh, our uh, desired color we will choose and we'll buy okay we'll buy the plastic items so we'll give the colors to the plastics so color colorants are coloring agents that are added to the molding mixture which gives desired color to the plastics. So they are in, inorganic colors, uh, coloring pigments are there as well, uh, as well as organic dyes also we use. I give some example students here. Inorganic pigments are like a lead chromate, yellow color, okay? Iron ferro cyanine dyes. So this is blue color. I give two colors here, okay? Na? So aluminum silicate and uh, organic uh, dyes like uh, tallow cyanine dyes, we get blue to green color, okay? So these are the colors we are using to get a desired color to the plastics. Okay, so this is about compounding of plastics. Students, when you get this question, okay, you have to write first what is compounding of plastics. So it is the process of adding ingredients to the resin to increase the physical properties of the molded products. Then you have to write what all we are using ingredients, okay? The following are the important ingredients added to the polymer resin. So first we will take the resin. To that we will add plasticizers, fillers, stabilizers, lubricants, catalyst, and coloring materials. So what you have to do here when you are learning this question, this topic, you have to prepare here first resin. You have to write about we are taking two types of resins, thermoplastic resin, thermosetting resin. Next, come to the plasticizers. So here, you have to remember what, what, what is the function of plasticizer. Then, example. What is the function of plasticizers? For each ingredient, you have to tell me function and example. What is the function of plasticizers? Why we are using plasticizers in polymer resins? When we are going for molding process to the polymer resin, we are adding plasticizers. Why? What is the function of plasticizers? Nobody is telling, nobody is there. Hello, students. Yes, ma'am. You are not there, huh? There, ma'am. Uh, tell me what is the function of plasticizers? Sir? Increasing plasticity and flexibility. Uh, example, you tell me. Example. What is the Tributal phosphate? Tributyl phosphate. One more example I need. Triphenyl phosphate. Triphenyl phosphate. Uh, tell me. Why we are using fillers, sir? Why we are adding pillars, sir, in polymer resins? To give better okay. hardness and strength. Give better hardness. Now, to give better hardness, what we are adding? Example, tell me. Carborandum. Carborandum. Okay. So, why we are adding barium salt? In molding mixture, why we are adding barium salt? To, make to be impervious to excess. Uh, why we are adding asbestos? To provide heat and corrosion resistance. Heat and corrosion resistance. Next. Why we are adding lubricants, oils in molding mixture? Glossy finish. Uh, glossy finish to the product. Uh, next. Prevent friction. Prevents. Uh, lubricants sticking, prevents. Uh, molded article. I'm sticking to the fabrication equipment. To the fabrication equipment example students oil, soap soap oils soaps steroids why we are adding catalyst we are adding it to accelerate polymerization accelerate polymerization to convert a fusible resin to cross chain form straight chain uh, straight chain polymer we can convert into cross linked polymer straight chain structure to cross linked structure Okay, next, stabilizers. Why we are using stabilizers? Improving the thermal stability. Improving the thermal stability. It should be stable at a different temperature. Okay, why we are using colors? 
Why we are using colors sir, in molding Why? mixture? So giving desired color. Desired the color to the plastics. Students for each in compounding of plastics, for all these ingredients, you have to know the function and example so that you can write well. Learn function and learn the examples. Okay, na? Okay. Shall I? Uh, yes, ma'am. Shall I take another topic? Yes, ma'am. Okay. See, I have to. We have to complete these polymers, and we have to discuss the question bank also. Okay. Now, students, write me the other top. Uh, next topic is. Okay, ma. Students, write uh, next topic, ma. Preparation properties and applications of polyvinyl chloride, nylon six six, Teflon, bakelite. Write down. Write down in your notes. Hello. Preparation properties and applications. We are going to discuss poly polyvinyl chloride, nylon six six, Teflon, bakelite. So for each one, you have to learn preparation and you have to learn properties and applications. So first one will start, ma. Preparation properties and applications of polyvinyl chloride. Hello, students. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Polyvinyl chloride, we are preparing, okay, by addition polymerization. Already we discussed in types of polymerization, ma. I have taken three examples, polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride, polystyrene, okay? So polyvinyl chloride is uh, prepared, okay? So by taking a number of vinyl chloride molecules, number of vinyl chloride molecules, and uh, going for the process polymerization, that is by using catalyst, applying heat and pressure, and we can obtain, we can get the polyvinyl chloride polymer. So before preparing this polyvinyl chloride, Okay, we have to prepare vinyl chloride monomers. Okay, vinyl chloride molecules monomers. So, how to prepare this vinyl chloride is we are taking estylene, estylene and hydrochloric acid, and we maintain the temperature 60 to 80 degrees centigrade in presence of catalyst, zinc chloride, metal chloride catalyst, and we will prepare vinyl chloride first. Okay. So we will take these vinyl chloride molecules, N number, number of vinyl chloride molecules and adding together, okay? And forming, we will get the polyvinyl chloride, okay? So polyvinyl chloride is prepared by addition polymerization, nothing but adding a number of vinyl chloride molecules by using a catalyst, applying heat and pressure, we get the polyvinyl chloride. Now you know the preparation students, okay? About these steps also we discussed in the previous class. Okay, we'll get a straight chain polymer here. Okay, in addition polymerization. So next properties, ma. Properties I gave here five points. I gave you remember this and write. Okay, so polyvinyl chloride (PVC) it is colorless, odorless. It is colorless, odorless. You won't get any odor. It is colorless, and also it is non-inflammable. Okay, non-inflammable and chemically inert powder chemically inert powder and it is resistant to light pvc is uh, it is resistant to light atmospheric o2 oxygen and also it is resistant to inorganic acids and alkalis but it is soluble in hot chlorinated hydrocarbons but it is soluble in hot chlorinated hydrocarbons for example ethyl chloride in hot uh, ethyl chloride so PVC will be, it will be soluble in ethyl chloride, but it is resistant to light, atmospheric O2, inorganic acids and alkalis. And its melting point is, PVC melting point is 148 degrees centigrade, 148. And it is strong and brittle. It is strong and brittle. PVC is strong and brittle. 
uh, brittle means easily breakable okay but it is strong only but it is having some brittleness okay so next ma pvc is not stable to heat it is not stable to heat and uv radiation means uh, ultraviolet uh, rays okay when it is uh, uh, when this uh, exposed to these articles pvc articles exposed to uv radiation it will undergo degradation it will undergo degradation so that is the uh, this is the point we have to know about the pro in property of pvc so pvc is not stable to heat and uv radiation it undergoes degradation okay so these are the properties of pvc first of all it is colorless odorless non inflammable and chemically inert powder it is resistant to light atmospheric o2 inorganic acids and alkalis and its melting point is 148 degree centigrade it is strong and brittle okay it is not stable to heat and uv radiation it will undergo degradation okay na so these are the properties applications will be we will use uh, for applications for uses of pvc we will take rigid pvc okay rigid pvc and plasticized pvc means uh, we won't use here any plasticizers so we'll take rigid pvc or unplasticized pvc and we'll go for some articles some items will prepare okay so this rigid pvc has superior chemical resistance they are resistant to chemicals and high rigidity they ha they're having high rigidity but it is having some brittleness okay so what we are making here is it is used for making sheets sheet will make a sheet like that are used in tank linings that are used in tank linings you can see any tank to that uh, like a chemical tank inside that uh, uh, chemical tank so the lining okay we will we'll arrange like a sheet okay so that is made by pvc rigid pvc and we go for safety helmets okay we will uh, um, we are making safety helmet by rigid pvc and also refrigerator components refrigerator components we are making by rigid pvc and tires also by rigid pvc so these four examples i have gave i have given you more uses of rigid pvc sheets used in tank linings safety helmets refrigerator components tires next one plasticized pvc plasticized pvc so this uh, obtained by adding uh, plasticizers we will use uh, triphenyl phosphate triglycerol phosphate okay tributyl uh, phosphate or dibutyl phthalate we can use and it is used for making sheets we will make the sheets by using uh, plasticized pvc also and see the students here packing rain coats packing rain coats table cloth curtains table cloth curtains electric cables electric cables toys radio components and plastic coated cloth okay chemical containers thermal insulating foam we will use as a thermal insulating foam okay we will use in buildings okay cinema theaters and aircrafts we will use the polyvinyl chloride so plasticized pvc you remember some points some examples here not everything also some example like making sheets packing rain coats table cloth curtains electric cables toys radio components plastic coated cloth and chemical containers okay thermal insulating foam we will use in buildings cinemas and aircrafts so these are some of the examples of plasticized pvc using of plasticized pvc okay uh, next class means tomorrow's class i will tell about nylon 66 preparation properties and uh, uh, applications no? and also we'll discuss teflon and betalite students hello yes ma'am uh, how to prepare pvc how to prepare pvc polyvinyl chloride how to prepare heating vinyl chloride monomer heating vinyl chloride monomers adding catalyst applying pressure so we will get the polyvinyl chloride what yeah. are the properties this addition reaction right ma'am ah, addition reaction mm -hmm. only one type of monomer we have taken yes yes or no yes sir containing one double bond yes, we will get a straight chain we will get a straight chain okay na 
linear polymer. Now, what are the properties? Tell me. PVC is colorless, odorless, non-colorless, odorless. Hmm. Non-inflammable. Non-inflammable. Hmm. Chemical inert. Chemical inert powder. And also, it is resistant to light. Light. Atmospheric oxygen. Atmospheric oxygen. Inorganic acids and alkalis. Acids and alkalis. Third point. Melting point, tell me. PVC melting point. 148 degrees Celsius. degrees centigrade. And also it is a strong polymer. It is strong and? Brittle. Brittle. Uh, last point you tell me, property. PVC is not stable to heat and UV stable radiation. Stable to heat and UV radiation. It will undergo degradation, degradation when it is exposed. Now what we are making with rigid PVC, ma? uses of rigid PVC. Uses of rigid PVC. Safety helmets. Safety helmets. Refrigerator components. Refrigerator components. Tires. Tires. Okay. And uh, next, uh, un plasticized PVC, what are the uses? Plasticized PVC. Uses. Rain coat. Uh, table cloth curtains. Table cloth curtains. Electric cables. Electric cables. Toys. Toys. Radio components. Radio components. Okay. You can write some four like. Okay. Na? For example, you can give chemical containers, you can write, okay, thermal insulating foam in buildings, cinema theaters, aircrafts, whatever you can remember in this, I gave, okay, like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine examples I have given, at least four or five you remember. So tomorrow we'll discuss next topic. So students, you understood my today's class? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, about exam pattern also cleared or no doubts? Sir? Right. 10th January holiday. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Uh, leave our class. Ki. Okay, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Have your lunch, everybody.